Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Eel River Community Church of the Brethren. It's nice to see everyone here this morning. Are there any announcements? Mary says the Bollinger Care Group is changed to the second Thursday at Johnny and Karen's at 630. So the calendar says this Thursday, but it'll be the second Thursday. The garden is producing. We've started to uh, harvest produce. South Whitley has a very shortened schedule. So tomorrow is going to be our produce for South Whitley. They're going to they'll take it once a month usually. And they are only open three days a week except by appointment. So tomorrow we're trying to get produce for South Whitley. So we'll be Tomorrow, they're delivering on Tuesday, but tomorrow we'll pick, they'll pick it up here for delivery on Tuesday. So we're working Monday, tomorrow morning to do our picking. Uh, we've also added an extra group at the college. We were informed that staff and students find the weekends to be a food desert, so we're providing some produce for them on occasional times, as well as North Manchester Food Bank. So, try to help as you can. Just a reminder that is the last Sunday of the month, so the women's group is meeting this afternoon at 2.30 here at the church. And we are currently working through uh, this Bible study, A Spirituality of Compassion, we do have extra books if you haven't come but would like to come and study with us. For our call to worship this morning, I would like to share something that I read um, a long time ago, but it's often given me pause to think about. Um, not every day, as I try to, but most days. Um, so the, the question is, if you wake tomorrow with only what you gave God thanks for today, what would you have? Please pray with me. Lord, we are gathered here with you today to worship you, to praise you, to give you thanks, to be here with one another in Christ's spirit and love and kindness. Amen. Our first praise hymn is the insert in the bulletin. Since this is new, our company must, are going to play it through for us once. <laughs>
Now comes the time in our worship where we can share our concerns, joys, faith stories, and prayers with one another. So as you feel comfortable, please come to the microphone. Now is the time of our worship where we give what we can, what we are able. Uh, this month, our uh, special offering is for the food pantries. Uh, it's the last Sunday to be able to give for that. So I was the worship leader for the first Sunday, and I spoke a little bit about the food pantries, but I'd like to just share some statistics that I saw last night um, about hunger in Indiana. So they say that in Indiana, one in nine people face hunger or food insecurity, and one in seven children face hunger or food insecurity. Uh, the SNAP program uh, said that about half of all of the households that use SNAP have children in them. And Wabash County was in the top 50 counties of Indiana um, for food insecurity. So on average, people in Wabash are at about a 5% higher risk than those nationally facing food insecurity. So Cliff shared that the produce that we have here at the garden goes to local food pantries. So if you're not able to share with your money, you also have opportunities to share with your time. So if you haven't done so already, please feel free to come up and give today. Lord, we thank you for your generosity. We thank you for our blessings that we have. We give back to you what is already yours that you have shared graciously with us. We pray that this money, that our time and effort can be used to bettering your kingdom here on earth. Amen. Now it's time for our children's story. If anyone would like to join us up front. Good, yes, all right. Okay, well, we have something in this bottle. This was the two bottles that I showed you before. What do you think we're going to do? Uh, let's think. I think it could make, make bubbles. But let me ask you this question first. What's inside a bubble? Bubble is, the outside is soap. That's right. But what's inside? Air. And where does that air come from? Your breath, right, inside you, your lungs. And we blow those bubbles out. Okay. Now, here's a good question. What else comes out of your lungs? Hmm. Your words and your sentences when you talk to people. And how can we make our words and our sentences like bubbles? We can wrap them up with something that makes them more beautiful. Like we could use some polite words when we speak, when we're talking. And what would some of those words be? She said it. She said, please, you're right. And any other words you can think of, polite words? Hmm. You are good. You want to blow? Say please. Say please. Blow. Blow. Good job. Oh, all right. Would you like to blow? Woo! I like bubbles. Are you ready? The dog really likes the bubbles. Yeah, he likes them the most. Can you say please? Oh, wow! Yay! You better stand up so they can see. All right? We want them to see your bubbles. Thank you. Pardon? You can say thank you. Wow! 
<laughs> what about sometimes, sometimes you have to say, I'm sorry. If you have a sentence, you want to bring out, we wrap it in those words. You say, I'm sorry that happened. So that's how we wrap our sentences. Wow, you guys are so good. Wow. <laughs> Can you come to my house and blow bubbles for my doggy? Yes, one more. This is the last one. Good job. Last one. Yes, okay. Remember that God wants us to be kind and loving, and when we wrap our words and our sentences with those kind and loving words, they're beautiful like bubbles. Thank you, June and Carolyn. Our scripture this morning is uh, Romans 15, 7. It's also on your bulletin, if you have that handy. Accept one another, then, just as Christ has accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. Our next hymn is on the other side of our insert. We kneel together. preface this song a little bit. In every worship service at annual conference, they would begin the worship with this song as the worship team processed in. And uh, we are not going to be singing that voice two part, just the voice one. So you don't have to worry about the bottom half. Uh, but I am going to have them play through the first verse and I'm going to sing it so you can hear it and then we will sing it together. We bow as one, we raise our voices to God above. Free all your people, make all things new. You're our Redeemer, we worship you. We kneel together, we bow as one, we raise our voices to God above. Free all your people, make all things new. You're our Redeemer, we worship you. We kneel together, we bow as one. We raise our voices to God above. Heal all your people, make us all new. Reach out to help us, care deeply too. We kneel together, we bow as one. We raise our voices. Thank you. I want to welcome Cliff Kindy up, who was our delegate for annual conference, who's going to give the report also. All right, so annual conference, this annual conference was the 235th recorded Church of the Brethren annual conference. And the theme was embracing one another as Christ embraces us. We traveled all the way to Omaha, Nebraska. We drove. We did it in one day and one day on the way back. 
There are some pictures of uh, Mary Sullenberger, who was the wife of the moderator this year. And uh, she also requested that we put up a picture of the worship. This was at the front of the worship center every day. And she has some words that she has sent for us because she is, I believe, in Pennsylvania right now. I think that's so right. Cliff. But she wanted to give some words as a moderator's wife representing our congregation. So these are from Mary. I hope that this note will suffice for a few reflections from the moderator's wife. We arrived in Omaha on Thursday before the official meeting started on July 10th. I volunteered in the annual conference office while Dave was moderating the standing committee meetings. I came to appreciate all that goes into preparation for the annual conference gathering. The setup of children's activities, youth activities, stage and sound systems, the blood drive station, first aid, and much more. Eel River has members, Paulette Reichenbach and others who have been involved with on-site setup in other years, it made me appreciate all it takes to prepare this large gathering. I also appreciated being able to watch the ideas that Dave and the Program Arrangement Committee dreamed about for three years finally come together. They have been talking and planning and finding volunteers since 2019. They planned music and decorations and worship leading and preaching. A lot of the ideas that Dave had been led to pursue all came together this week with lots of help from many people. The music, which included drums and international sounds, helped to incorporate the inclusiveness of our international guests. The music also included traditional four-part harmony hymns that were led by choristers, including Nancy Faust, who was a longtime song leader who had taught at Bethany Seminary for many years. Dave and his committee decided they did not want a traditional altar with flowers and candles and a cross. Instead, they had an artist from Northfield Church of the Brethren in Indianapolis design the characters to adorn the front of the stage. This area at the stage was like an altar, but had pieces added to it each night, until by Thursday morning it was finally complete. It was made up of characters who were each made from a bass that was a different kind of drum. Uh, if you can't see us clearly, we can show you a picture later on if you want to see it up close. These were the drums used a snare drum, a bongo drum, a Nigerian drum, a Dominican drum, and a plastic bucket drum. These characters were multicolored to represent racial diversity. One was dressed up in a tie and another in a cowboy hat to represent diversity in professions. One was pushed in on Tuesday evening in a wheelchair. By the end of the week, they were all assembled at the front of the stage to represent diversity and inclusion and care for one another. I watched a lot of business sessions this year. It was a joy to see Dave have an opportunity to share a lot of video clips he's collected over the years. He was able to mix them in with the required reports and queries. He showed a collage of 35 years of moderators that have served since 1987. He also showed a clip of Don Dernbaugh that explained about M.R. Ziegler's simple method of praying without a lot of formalities as some church members expected. I laughed at some of the antics Dave led the delegates through in order to keep the business sessions light. At one point, he asked all the delegates in favor of a motion to respond with, I, 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 because he remembered his Pennsylvania Dutch grandma using that word so often. Did you respond with that, Cliff? Yes, I did. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I think Dave truly enjoyed and was humbled to be allowed to serve the denomination as moderator. It was wonderful to see the culmination of many hours of hard work from him and so many volunteers. I pray that glory and honor was brought to God through all that was carried out in those four short days in Omaha and that people went home truly feeling embraced by one another as Christ embraces us. Thank you, Cliff and Audrey, for representing the Eel River Community Church of the Brethren and for allowing me to share my thoughts. Mary. One aside there, Dave Thornburg was the artist at, in Indianapolis who did the worship center, and he has agreed to put that on tour so we could bring it to the front of our congregation here if we want. Uh, we need to figure out transportation. He doesn't want to do transportation, and we need to be able to take good care of those pieces that are loaned from other people. Okay. 
So here are some pictures of the conference center. Cliff and I both were in the hotel that was connected to the conference center, so we didn't even actually have to go outside, but we did um, <laughs> go outside. But you could walk across the sky bridge from the hotel to the conference center, and that was where all of the conference activities happened. Uh, and Cliff, do you want to talk about the bridge? There's a bridge that goes the other direction, goes east to Iowa, all the way to Iowa from Nebraska. And Dean and Reba got up 7 o'clock Monday morning and walked across that bridge. I stayed with them, so I, was, I participated, kind of. <laughs> so Sunday worship was the very first worship service. And uh, Dave Sullenberger spoke as moderator, and I would highly recommend, you can actually watch any of the worship services. They are still up on the Church of the Brethren website, so I could get you a link if you want to see any of the worship services that we talk about. But Dave's sermon was one of the best sermons I have ever seen in my life. It was very impressive. I mean, he's a video guy, but he had pre-recorded himself talking. And so his whole sermon was a conversation between himself and himself up on the screen. And as a preacher, I know how perfect your timing has to be if you have something that's going to come in at a certain time. And uh, it was just a really great sermon and a lot of humor like he always has and focused on getting along with one another despite our diversity and loving one another. And uh, yes, I would recommend watching it if you haven't, but it was very good. Uh, Cliff was also called up to give testimony during that service. Cliff, did you want to say anything about that? They've probably heard that testimony. Yeah. yeah. It's just one of my stories from Christian Peacemaker teams coming out of Iraq when we had the car accident. So I shared about that. And the way an Iraqi, someone who would have seen me as the enemy, responded to care for me. These are just some other pictures from Sunday morning worship or Sunday evening worship. Uh, there's Nancy Faust in the bottom right directing, uh, and it kind of reminded me of Rosemary Piper. And I mean, how incredible a pianist she was. I, age does not matter as far as talents go. Um, so it was great to see her up on stage. And then the top picture uh, is Dave playing the electric guitar because he wore a thousand hats at annual conference <laughs> and. Um, then this one uh, on the left here is a team, uh, one of them was Frank Ramirez from Union Center Church of the Brethren, and they did a skit from uh, Church of the Brethren history in every worship service that was funny but also very uh, meaningful because it tied our past to our present. Cliff, did you want to say anything else about Sunday worship? I don't think so. Thank you. So early Monday morning, I went to a clergy women's breakfast, which uh, you can see had a, 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 so many clergy women at it, which was great to see. And I actually tried to go to this two years ago, and it was full. So, I mean, that was a great thing, but I got into it this year. And they had a panel of clergy women who talked about... Um, we got this anchor, and we talked about when you're stressed or you're feeling overwhelmed how to find your anchor in the storm and how to still connect with God and people, which was really meaningful and vulnerable. Uh, so that was the first thing I did Monday morning. And then I went to the Brother and Volunteer Service luncheon with my uh, grandpa, Ron Finney. I don't know if you could see us in the picture at the bottom. We tried to go to as much as we could as possible together. Uh, but the Brother and Volunteer Service luncheon centered around music and about uh, the presenters had played music in Hiroshima, Japan, where the bomb was dropped, and they talked about meeting everyone there and uh, the, the importance of coming together and working for peace afterwards and the role that music plays in that. So that was a really interesting workshop uh, that I would be glad to talk about more sometime also. Each noon and each evening, there were six or seven choices. And you know, I don't only check four of them, but you can only go to one of them. You know, so it's a full, full time. Every 
lunchtime when you're supposed to take a break from the business, every evening after worship service. Annual conference can be 48 hours a day. <laughs> yes, but it's all wonderful, and you can. there's always something for everyone that you might be interested in, uh, whether it's a workshop or a lunch or uh, business sessions. I'm more for the delegates, but Cliff, if you want to talk about the business. So every day at 8.30 and at 2 o'clock, it was time for business. And business included things like a daily Bible study, Steve Reed and uh, Kettering. What's her first name? Denise. Denise Kettering provided a worship service or a Bible study each time, so that was part of the worship service. We also dealt with reports, like from the annual conference agencies. There are three of those. Uh, Bethany Seminary, Ader Financial, which used to be Brethren Benefit Trust, and On Earth Peace, which is one of the organizations we support with our monthly special offerings. Though, so reports from them, reports from World Council of Churches, National Council of Churches, Christian Churches Uniting, the ecumenical connections that we have as a denomination. Uh, so those reports were accepted. We also had elections. Now, it's interesting, you know, Dave was our moderator this year, and next year our moderator will be Tim McElwee, and also from our state, and the following year, the moderator-elect this coming year, is Madeline Metzger from Goshen. So it's like Indiana really dominates the moderatorships these years. Um, so elections happened. Um, I have down front here all kinds of information. There are bulletins from each worship service. There are uh, daily reports, like a journal that comes out that's here under this pulpit. In the middle, there's the annual conference booklet. And then pictures that Mary provided for us, like a postcard form of the worship center. And then Dave was passing out refrigerator magnets that have the theme of annual conference on. So you can help yourself to those as long as they last. On the other side, there's a, a delegate packet that every delegate carried. Um, I'm going to mention, as a part of the business, there were about 60 tables. So we met in table format, sort of like a potluck meal with everybody around a table. And that provided opportunity for us to discuss issues, especially as new business came up. We had a series of questions that we dealt with as a table group. There were six or seven people around each table, and they were very ver varied. They were from different districts. They were a mix of gender, different ages, different races, different everything was could be different, was different around your table. And I go to lots of things in the Church of the Brethren. I didn't know anybody else at my table, and I was the table facilitator. So it's it's neat opportunity to hear different voices, to hear different perspectives, to hear different experiences. And as we discussed, that gave us wisdom as we came to grapple with the votes on different issues. Uh, business items. Should I go ahead and... One of the new business items that came up was from South Southern Ohio, Kentucky District. It was a query about standing with people of color. Um, it was passed almost unanimously. Uh, I'm going to read the response that's part of that query that was recommended by Standing Committee. So business goes before Standing Committee that Dave, the moderator, moderates, and then it comes with a recommendation to the delegate body. It doesn't always, the delegate body doesn't always accept that recommendation from Standing Committee. They can go deal with it however they wish. 
How many of you have been to annual conference before? Oh, wow. Yeah, lots of you. So you have a sense of what this is. But this is the official statement that comes out of the response to that one query. We recommend that this response to the query on standing with people of color be implemented through a T. Nope, this isn't it. Oh, wait. Where did I? Somewhere I have a. Let me just read this part. The Standing Committee recommends that the concerns be answered with this response. We recognize the struggles faced by many of our sisters and brothers of color and believe the church should be agents of change. We encourage congregations, districts, agencies, and other denominational entities to continue to follow the teachings of Jesus by living out the great commandment of loving our neighbor as ourselves. We understand the great diversity that the word neighbor implies. So we encourage congregations to study the teachings of Jesus and how they apply to our relationships with people of color, to stand with people of color, offer sanctuary from violence, and identify and work against institutional racism, and then begin to live out those findings by being Jesus in the community. So that's a task for us as a congregation back home from annual conference. Another one was uh, amendments. This was an older business, no, new business item, number one. Amendments to the appeal section on ethics and ministry. Just procedures for standing committee for annual conference to deal with appeals on uh, sanctioning of pastors in different situations. A third one was breaking down barriers, increasing access to denominational events. For many people, Denominational events are hard to attend, either because, whoa, they're on the West Coast, it's very expensive to travel to the West Coast. Or maybe it's a setting that's hard to access, like if it's in our basement. You know, how do, if people are up here, how do they get downstairs if there isn't an elevator? Um, if I'm hard of hearing, like some of us are, how do we make meetings accessible to people who find it difficult to hear somebody speaking. If I can't see, how do I make my way around a space that has microphones in the middle of the aisle or papers on the stairway or things like that? You know, what are the, what are the thing, ways we can make our meetings more accessible? So that was passed with a simple majority vote. Um, some, one simple one was revisions to bylaws. So because of changes, maybe the subject and verbs don't agree in number, or maybe the tense was wrong, or so little changes like that, um, grammatical kinds of things. And then we spent a lot of time on guidelines for pastor salaries and benefits. Uh-oh, Dieta's not here. Oh, she's downstairs. <laughs> uh, so lots of things dealing with the pastoral salary scale, uh, recommended living, cost of living adjustment, uh, arrangements for congregations, like our congregation. If, say, we decide to place Pastor Audrey at two-thirds time or three-fourths time, but we don't have the finances to pay her that. So then this committee was recommending that what we do is look at tasks that are part of the church, part of the congregation, and decide which ones Audrey will do and which ones we will carry. So that it's not, we decide what we're able to pay. We say we were able to pay half time and what, but she's hired for two-thirds time. So what that means is that we have to pick up 
the extra sixth, is that right? They have to pick up the extra sixth of the tasks that Pastor Audrey would have been carrying had she been two-thirds time. So it really, and our congregation has done that well, I think, over the years, and so it's a natural for us, but I think it's a, it's a good a good way for a congregation to think, like especially congregations say, oh, we, we hired a pastor, we don't have to do anything. No, we do have to do things. And so it's an invitation for us to consider that. Um, the, the cost of living adjustment, there was quite a bit of discussion on that, but a recommendation that the, 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 the salaries of staff persons be increased 8.2% because of inflation, because of the way things are rising here. Um, and then there was this, the leadership team brought a proposal to deal with relationships between annual conference and annual conference agencies. I would mentioned those three agencies before. And so that relationship has often been pretty muddy. And so the leadership team brought a recommendation that started with a definition. Well, let me find it. Let me see if I can find this note, my notes in this. Started with a, a definition of agency, what is an agency of the Church of the Brethren Annual Conference, um, what are the understandings that come with that definition, and how do we deal with any differences that come up. It came out of a, a query that On Earth Peace brought many years ago, asking for that kind of clarity. Annual conference was chiding on earth peace about one of its actions and on earth peace said well what we need is clarity and so this the leadership team brought this proposal and it was accepted with a more than two-thirds majority vote from the, the delegate body uh, what else should i say about business oh dave was fantastic he just he brought a relaxed spirit to the business, sort of a, a backcountry moderator approach to annual conference, and it, it helped helped us through the more tense times of the business, and always always was there. He worked with a team, Jim Beckwith, the conference secretary, and Tim McAwee, the moderator elect and other people up on the stage to always be prepared for what was happening. So that was excellent. Um, yeah, I'll stop at that point. So just a note about Monday worship. If you want to watch another different kind of sermon, um, oh, I wrote down her name. Leonor Ochoa, I believe, is the woman who preached the woman in the blue, and she preached entirely in Spanish. She was so passionate. It was incredible. The lady behind her translated in English basically the second after she stopped a sentence. She would be saying the sentence again She's in English. She's from Dominican Republic, is that right? I think so, yeah. yeah. Um, but it was amazing. If you ever want to hear a sermon simultaneously in Spanish and English, and it was an excellent sermon, too. So that was who preached Monday. And the choir sang, and they had everyone who was going to National Youth Conference stand up. And they kind of blessed us for that conference, too, which was really nice. Uh, then Ted and company did a play called We Own This Now, which was focused on the Native Americans taking of the land, the, or the European settlers taking the land from the Native Americans, which felt very relevant to what we have been doing at this church. And I believe a Cliff maybe asked him if they could come perform it here. I did, what do you yeah. say about that, Cliff? They had a talk back. Uh, Ted, 
Ted Swartz and Michelle Milney were the two actors that did this. And they had a talkback session the following day. And we asked them about that. We were asking about a DVD, and they said, well, we don't have that together yet, but we'd be willing to come to Manchester and do something. So maybe we can do something with Eel River or with Manchester Church of the Brethren or maybe with the university. It was fantastic. It was a story starts in Russia and a Mennonite family fleeing Russia. It's a mother with her four sons. They don't know where the father is. Only one of the sons survives the journey, and the, the markers on the graveyard in Kansas carry that memory of those that didn't survive the journey. And they moved on to empty land, empty land in Kansas. They did, Ted and, and Michelle did a play, sort of, is it empty? What, what are all those people doing out there? No, but they aren't really people. It's empty. If, I mean, look at it. It's, it's empty land. It's your land. It's empty land. But there are people out there. Oh, no. It's empty. It's empty land. The doctrine of discovery. And they really grabbed hold of that. And then the father and daughter discussion that happens there is the father has farmed the land that his grandmother, the traveler from Russia, came to Kansas it's been her land in the family for years, for 100 years, I guess. And the daughter comes home from an event. She was working on a pipeline protest. She said, who used to live here before us? Oh, nobody. No, but there were people here. And so do we own the land? Well, if we own the land, how do we own the responsibility that comes with having this land? Or did we take the land? Own the land or take the land? Oh, wow. So really important issues that I think all of us need to deal with. And our congregation has sort of tipped our toes into the waters. <laughs> I hope that we can see it. Either here or if they... You think they are? Oh, cool. That's nice. Yeah, or we could maybe have a talk back here. Do you think that would be an open one? The pub, if they come to the university, it would be an open event. Okay. Cliff, do you want to say a quick word about the healing racism session you went to? Yeah, that was Monday. One of the seven sessions you had to choose one thing from. Um, it was one that Eric Meller and Rioya Lee, who are the new directors of the global mission work, the title was Go and Make Disciples of All Nations. And if there's anything, if there's hope in the Church of the Brethren, it comes from our global partners, our global Church of the Brethren partners, and our communities of color, congregations of color across the United States and Puerto Rico. Uh, they were talking, introducing us to the work in South Sudan, in Rwanda, in Kenya, in Burundi, in uh, Democratic Republic of the Congo, and then they jumped to the Western Hemisphere, we looked at Haiti, we looked at Dominican Republic, and those are strong entities of the Church of the Brethren already, some work in Brazil already, but then new efforts that are happening in Venezuela, in Cuba, in uh, Ecuador, and it's like, whoa. <laughs> so it's that kind of energy that they displayed in that workshop. And it was, it was a powerful witness to, to the ways in which communities around the globe are finding something attractive with this, from this Anabaptist Church of the Brethren image of doing church. There's something that's very attractive, and I think it's 
It's the practice, the practical parts that tie in with our faith, with our following Jesus, that the ways we live, the ways we make an income, the ways we care for people in medical situations, the ways we educate people are part of that total package of well-being. Tuesday worship, just to note, there's a picture of them carrying up the altarpiece. And also our DE, Annalisa, spoke that evening. You could also watch her sermon, but uh, she talked about the prodigal son and the small ways we can die and be brought back to life by God. So she did a really good job. I went to, on a visit to the Tri-Faith Center, which was off campus in Nebraska. This is a place where they have a Christian church and a Muslim place of worship and a Jewish place of worship all in the same uh, round. And so they all worship side by side with one another and are in partnership with one another. And I, I could talk for a long time about that. So please ask me about the tri Face Center if you want to know about it. Uh, because it was incredible just to see the three religions who all believe in the one God worshiping together. And it was a very unique place to go visit. Uh, well, you already kind of touched on the global church, Cliff, and I would say definitely ask Cliff more about the global church if you get a chance also, because he went to a lot of those workshops. And I went to a, on the last evening, a workshop on resiliency and how when you are stretched past your breaking point, uh, what are ways to take care of yourself and best practices for grounding yourself and uh, centering yourself and just how to take care of yourself when you're trying to care for other people. And I would be glad to talk about this one too. If anyone is feeling that stress of life and you wanna talk about grounding practices because we learned a lot of good ones in that workshop. And then we went to the Brother and Press dinner, which was very exciting, but tied a lot into the Sunday school class that Cliff is doing because it was a woman who has just wrote a book on reading Luke, which is what you're reading in your Sunday school class. Did you want to say a word about that? or? It's a book about Luke Acts, and Christina Booker is doing that jointly with Bob Neff. So it uh, talks about the Brethren way of doing Bible that we do it together, and that we try to practice. It's not just coming up with ideas about what we should think, but about what we should do. And they, she sees that as a radical, countercultural way of doing scriptural study. Uh, then there was the passing of the gavel. So from Dave to Tim for next year's annual conference, and in Dave's closing speech, he put a picture of Mary up and talked about how important she was in his whole moderator journey, which was very meaningful. And the Wednesday evening worship, the children's choir sang, and this was Nathan Rittenhouse preached, yeah. I believe. And he, uh, I, did you have anything to say about, I don't remember. He did He's a smorgasbord of a person just because he's had so many different training places. Very intelligent speaker, yeah. I would say. And Thursday morning, Belita Mitchell preached and they uh, prayed over the new moderator elect, Madeline Metzger, who is from Goshen. And it's very exciting to see her elected also. And Next year's annual conference, 2023, will be in Cincinnati, Ohio, which is not that far away. I mean, it is not as far away as Nebraska. No. <laughs> um, and the theme is living God's love. And I, I am always plugging for annual conference, but it's an amazing experience. If you can go, I don't know if the church, if you're worried about money, if you tell us, maybe we could help you go. But it's amazing just to see all of the brethren from the denomination gathered in one place and to get to pick the workshops that you go to or to see the worship services. I, don't, I think it's an incredible place. 
congregations were introduced, new congregations, new fellowships. There were 14. All of them congregations or fellowships of color. That's where the church is growing. And you can see that at annual conference. You'll see it in Cincinnati. As you look across the congregation, like our congregation, you're a person of color, right, Pastor Audrey? So our congregations are becoming communities of color. Well, thank you. That was our annual conference report. And if you are interested in learning more, following the service, we are going to show the wrap-up video in here. So if you want to stay after the service and see the wrap-up video, we are going to show it after this. The closing hymn is number 76, Praise, I Will Praise You, Lord. Will you stand, please, if you're able? the spirit of annual conference this week, embrace one another as Christ embraces you. <laughs> 